What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'm continuing my series on my NHL 2021-2022 season predictions. And for this video, we're going to be talking about a very underrated team that continues to prove people wrong year in and year out and that is the New York Islanders. So over the course of the last few seasons, the Islanders have established themselves as a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. Being one of those frustrating shutdown opponents that give a lot of teams headaches, they are one of the better teams in the league, especially come postseason time when they turn their play up to the next level. And this past season was no different. They had a very solid regular season though, 32-17-7 record for 71 points, which was only good enough for fourth in the East Division and a very, very strong East Division. However, that was good enough to make the playoffs on a 104 point pace over 82 games and they went on yet another deep playoff run. However, once again, they lost in the Stanley Cup semifinals, losing to the Tampa Bay Lightning for the second year in a row. Take a look at their offensive stats, pretty below average offensive team, 2.71 goals for per game, which only ranked 21st in the league and an 18.8 .8 power play percentage which was 20. But of course, their bread and butter is their defensive play. The 2.23 goals against per game ranked second in the NHL and an 83.7% penalty kill percentage, which was tied for sixth in the league. Honestly, this is just an amazing story by this team. They have great coaching. And honestly, I look at them on paper. It's a very mediocre team on paper that just every single year finds a way you know, to play super well under that incredible defensive system. Despite the bottom 10 offense, they are a top five defensive team and they just get the job done every single year. Take a look at their top five scores from last season. Their leading score being none other than Matthew Barzell, 55 games, 17 goals, 28 assists for 45 points. Barzell is obviously one of the best young centers in the game. And of course, on an Islanders team that doesn't provide a ton of offense, he is a very key piece to that forward. Group. And in second, we have Josh Bailey, who in 54 games had eight goals and 27 assists for 35 points. Underrated player, one of the better playmakers in the game, especially being on an Islanders team that doesn't provide a ton of offense. He is a very, very solid top six asset for this Islanders team, and he will be moving forward. We have a tie for third. First, we have Brock Nelson, who led the team with 18 goals and 15 assists for 33 points. He's just a very underrated second line center, if not the most underrated in the league. He just provides a ton of goal scoring. His goal scoring has been up over the last couple of years, and he should continue to provide a ton of offense that is desperately needed in that top six for the Islanders. And we also have Jordan Eberle, who in 55 games had 16 goals and 17 assists for 33 points. Now, Eberle, a very solid, solid top six winger, very decent production. Pretty much every season, he's about at a 50-point pace, and this season was basically no different with the Islanders. Was huge, especially in the playoffs. He was very key to that Islanders playoff run. Then in fifth, we have Nick Letty, who in 56 games had two goals and 29 assists, which led the team for 31 points. Just a very solid offensive defenseman. He's very solid at moving the puck, and he was a pivotal part of that top four on the blue line, obviously being mainly the offensive contributor on that blue line, but still very solid all around. We have the goaltending tandem that they had this season. Obviously, their starter being Semyon Varlamov, who in 36 games had a 19-11-4 record with a 2.04 goals against average and a 929 save percentage. Now, obviously, you know what you're going to get from the goaltending. I mean, Varlamov has been pretty amazing ever since coming to the Islanders. Now, one could argue it's because of the defensive system that they're a part of, which is why Varlamov's numbers may look a little bit more inflated because, you know, that defensive system really makes the goaltending their jobs much easier. But for Varlamov, still, regardless, when they need saves, he answers the call. Very solid numbers. You can't really complain about that whatsoever. Then, of course, they have the rookie in the backup role, Ilya Sorokin, 22 games. A 13-6-3 record with a 2.17 goals against average and a 9-18 save percentage. Again, Sorokin had a very solid rookie season and him being in a tandem role with Varlamov, that's probably what it's going to be like moving forward because I don't think the Islanders like to roll with one goalie. They like to go in a tandem. They did that throughout the course of the regular season. And even in the playoffs, they you know kind of shifted those two throughout their entire playoff run. Overall, this is just a very underrated team that continues to surprise people for whatever reason. And next year probably should be more of the same, honestly. Entering this season, I mean, most of the team is pretty much still intact, so looking to go on yet another deep playoff run. But I did re-sign a bunch of people, you know, to keep their core intact. However, in terms of what they add and what they lost, pretty quiet offseason. Their lone addition, which was only recently confirmed, was Zach Parise, who comes from the Minnesota Wild, who's being bought out. I feel like he could be a very solid, you know, third line, maybe even a second line scoring winger for this team. I still feel like he has some goal scoring upside. Could probably pot around 15 to 20 goals. But they did take a bit of a hit in terms of what they lost. Number one being Nick Letty, who was a very solid top four defenseman for this team. 
And now I don't exactly know where the offense is going to come from on that blue line with him now being gone. And they also lost a very solid top six winger, Jordan Everly, who you could pencil him in for 50 points every season. He's basically a perennial 20 goal scorer, it seems like. That's another key loss, especially for a team that needs a ton of offense. I don't know if Parise necessarily replaces Everly to that degree, but regardless, he'll still be fine, but I still think that's a pretty significant downgrade in my opinion. So although I would say that they did get worse, at least on paper, losing a top six winger and a top four defenseman, I mean, we just can't judge this Islanders team based on what they have on paper because they still have that winning formula and that only gets further emphasized come playoff time. So these are who I'm predicting to be the top five scorers for the Islanders entering this season. And first, I got Matthew Barzell having a very good season, 24 goals, 48 assists for 72 points. Now, a 70 plus point season might be a tall order for anyone on the Islanders to achieve, especially since that team caters more towards their defensive play and their shutdown play. However, we all know that Matt Barzell has the skill set to elevate his offense production, and I feel like he's always on the cusp of doing something amazing. Just the type of skill that he possesses, he just can never really you know, take that next level in terms of his statistical production. So basically the system could hinder him, which is why, you know, 70 points, like I said, it might be a bit too much to ask, but I feel like he definitely has what it takes to, you know, get to that level. And hopefully he can, because, you know, the Islanders could use a ton of offense. And if he can elevate his offense to that level, I feel like it makes them a significantly better team. I'm going to go with the two-way tie for a second here. First, I'm going to go with Josh Bailey scoring a very solid 17 goals and 39 assists for 56 points. Bailey, we all know he's a very solid, underrated playmaking winger. And obviously come playoff time, he's also very productive. He stepped up in key moments throughout the course of the last two playoff runs. I mean, he's still not that old. He's what, 31, 32? Like he's likely due for another 50 plus point season. I would be shocked if he gets any less than that, unless he gets hurt, of course. And I'm also gonna go with Anders Lee scoring 56 points with 29 goals to lead the team, adding 27 assists as well. Now, Anders Lee went down with injury late in last season, so he wasn't able to suit up for the playoffs, but when healthy, he's a very solid goal scorer, should be hovering around 25 to 30 goals, especially playing on a wing with Matt Barzell, one of the better playmakers in the league. Fourth, I'm gonna go with Brock Nelson, scoring 26 goals and 23 assists, for 49 points. Again, like I said, underrated second line center, one of the most underrated players in the league. Great goal scorer, should hover around 25 plus goals and, you know, probably challenge for about 50 points. I think if he hits more than 50 points, it wouldn't surprise me. And in fifth, I'm going to go with Anthony Beauvillier now with 22 goals and 24 assists for 46 points. Now, I really like Anthony Beauvillier and he's still very, very young, but I feel like he just, he has more to give in my opinion. I just feel like he still has that skill set to be a very solid middle six winger. I definitely think he's poised for a 20 plus goal season and over 40 points. I'm not exactly sure if he's ever hit that. I feel like he probably should be in for a really solid season now being you know a legitimate top six forward now being with brock nelson and josh bailey amazing second line especially in the playoffs they were amazing all right so in terms of where i see the islanders entering this season i still think they're a good team i mean i can't just sleep on them and you know dismiss what they have done over the last couple of years i'm still picking them to make the playoffs probably not like as dominant of a regular season team but i do feel like they'll have enough to get in so i'm picking them to make the postseason once again. So with that, I'm going to say they finished fourth in the Metropolitan Division with a 44-29-9 and nine record for a total of 97 points, which is good enough for the first wild card in the Eastern Conference. Even last season, they did have some struggles. You know, it was a little bit of a fight to make the playoffs, but eventually they did get in. I could see them, you know, being more of a, you know, struggle to make the playoffs as well, but I feel like they have enough to get in. And of course, when they get in, you, you got to watch out, right? Like like they've proven the last couple of years. You could say they're weaker on paper, but I just don't have it in me to bet against this team. I just feel like they're too good at shutting down their opponents. And they also get a ton of contributions around the lineup. They're a very deep team, even though they don't have really a clear cut offensive threat superstar. I mean, you could argue Barzell, but in the system, he is a little bit sheltered offensively. Regardless, I think this is very likely a playoff team once again, and they should be a threat to go on another deep playoff run. Maybe they have what it takes to win a Stanley Cup. I can definitely see it, let's be honest. All right, so that is it for me wrapping up my season expectations on the New York Islanders. You think they're in for another similar stellar year where they you know, make the playoffs, shut down their opponents, and go on another deep playoff run? Or do you think this type of success, this type of run with this team on paper cannot be sustained and you see them taking a step back, especially in a much tougher metropolitan division. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will talk to you in the next one. I'll see you guys later.